is getting a commitment from people. Right? And this is something that probably many of us have done in our own lives. For example, if I'm moving and I want my friend to help me with the very painful task of moving, I'm probably going to get him or her to agree and, and you know, swear that they will be there at that time and place to help me, to guarantee that they'll be there, that I can rely on them. Right? And research shows that commitment is a really powerful tool for getting people to follow through on the change. So here's an example. All right, so there was this, uh, there was this restaurant. It was a pretty high-end, fancy restaurant, and they were having this little issue. Because they were very high-end, very fancy, they were used to being fully booked, right? You would have to get a reservation weeks, if not months, in advance. But the problem that started happening is that people would call, they would make a reservation, the night would come, and, you know, they weren't there. They didn't show up. And so empty tables meant money lost to this restaurant. And so they wanted to figure out, you know, how can we get people to stop making reservations and not showing up? So working with researchers, they made one very small change when taking reservations. So they'd answer the phone, they would take the reservation, they would write it all down. They would finish the conversation by asking one little question. And that was, if you change your plans, will you call us and let us know that you won't be coming? And they waited for the person to say, yes, I'll do that, which of course everyone said. Adding that one little sentence at the end of the phone call and waiting for that yes response decreased the no-show rates at the tables from 30% down to 10% made a lot more money for the restaurant with essentially no extra time, definitely no extra money involved. Just the power of the community. Let's get that one just in the interest of time. Um, one other example of the power of commitments from the research. So, I know most of you said you care about the environment, so one other question for environmental advocates is, how can we get people to use public transportation more often? So, researchers again wanted to put that, put that to the test. So, they approached four groups of people with four different approaches. The first group, they just gave them information. Information about what buses ran, the routes, the schedules, things like that. The second group was asked to make a verbal commitment to ride the bus more often. The third group was given 10 free bus tickets. And the fourth group was both given the 10 free tickets and asked to make the verbal commitment. So, which one of these four groups do you think ended up riding the bus the most over the next few months? Who would say the first one, the one that got information? Who would say the second one, the one that made the commitments? Two hands. Who would say the third one, the ones that got the 10 free tickets? One hand, and I'm guessing everybody's on number four, the tickets and the commitment. Well, you know, you're all partially right and also partially wrong. Because what it turned out is that both the second and the fourth group rode the bus the most. In other words, the tickets actually didn't matter at all. The tickets didn't get, didn't get one more person to ride the bus more often. It was only the commitment that got people to actually ride those buses. And, you know, if I ran the bus system here in Atlanta or Athens or you know, anywhere here in Georgia, and I wanted people to ride the bus more often, I would think that giving away free tickets would absolutely be the best way to get people on my buses. It's just another example of how our assumptions about what motivates people are not always correct, and certainly an example of the power of commitments in action. So, in our own lives and in whatever cause it is that we're promoting, the more we can get people to make a commitment, to do what we'd like them to do, whether that's you know, donate to fight poverty, whether it's you know eat less chicken or go vegetarian, whether it's recycle, whether it's you know donate to whatever cause it is that helps the world. The more we can get people to make a commitment, you know, whether that's a written commitment, a verbal commitment, a public commitment, a group commitment, all of those things make people much like much more likely to follow through and do what we would like them.